Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome to part 7 of my networking tutorial series. I think at this point it goes without saying, but if you haven't already, make sure to watch the previous parts of this series before diving into this one. Today we'll be fixing a couple things before improving player movement and finally implementing server side collisions. Unfortunately, I've been a bit sick lately, and as you may have already noticed, my throat hasn't fully recovered, so my voice is going to sound different today. Of course, if you get stuck along the way, all the code is on GitHub, and you can also check out the Discord server where you can ask questions and hang out with other developers. There's links to both of those in the description. First, we need to fix an error that occurs when a client disconnects. In the last video, I overlooked the fact that the server side disconnect function isn't called from the main thread, which means that attempting to destroy the player game object will cause an issue. To resolve this, we can simply use our thread manager to destroy the player object from the main thread. Next, we're going to allow the server to run in the editor again. I disabled this in the last video because the Unity editor doesn't shut down sockets correctly when exiting play mode, and my code for manually shutting down the connections was producing some errors. I've looked into this a bit more, and it turns out that the exception that was being thrown, which I couldn't get rid of, is actually used for flow control. I'll explain a bit more in a moment. To resolve this, remove the check for whether or not the code is running in the Unity editor. Then, in an onApplicationQuit method, call server.stop, which doesn't exist yet. In the server class, create a stop method. This will be called any time you exit play mode or the application is closed. Inside, call the TCP listeners stop method, followed by the UDP listeners close method. If we run the server now, you'll notice that once you exit play mode, an exception is printed to the console. Believe it or not, this is actually by design. What happens is that when we close the UDP client instance, it internally calls the receive callback method, which happens to be our UDP receive callback. Inside the callback, calling the end receive method will throw an object disposed exception, which we simply need to be prepared to handle. Since we've already wrapped the code in the callback inside a try catch block, we're good to go. If you don't want to see this exception in the console every time you stop the server, you can simply remove the debug.log in the catch block, but I'm going to leave it there. Back in Unity, open the server's player prefab. We're going to use Unity's built-in character controller component to help us handle movement, so add that to the prefab's root object. Since the character controller has its own collider, let's remove the capsule collider and replace it with a visible mesh so we can see the player in the editor. Open up the player class and add a reference to the character controller component followed by a float to store the force of gravity. Then make the move speed value public and remove the division by constants.ticks per sec. Finally, add a float for the jump speed and a private float to store the player's vertical velocity. Now add a start method to the player class. Inside, multiply our gravity value by time.fixedDeltaTime squared and multiply move speed and jump speed by time.fixedDeltaTime. Down in the move method, remove the assignment to transform.position and multiply the move direction by the move speed. Then call the character controller's move method and pass it our move direction. At this point, our player should move just as before. However, we still need to apply gravity, so check if the player is standing on the ground. If so, reset the player's vertical velocity. Outside the if statement, add gravity to the vertical velocity. Finally, set the move direction's y component to the vertical velocity. Back in the editor, open up the player prefab and assign the player's character controller to the appropriate field. Then hit play to start the server and do the same on the client. Once you click the connect button, you should see the player falling down into the void. To prevent this, let's add some objects for the player to collide with. I'll start with just a simple plane for the floor. If you connect the client now, you should see the player hovering in midair. At least that's what it looks like. When I move the player, you can see that he moves on both the client and the server, and if I walk off the edge of the plane, I fall into the void again. This is server authoritative movement at work. Even though the client has no idea that the plane is there, the player doesn't fall through because the server knows it's there and keeps him standing above it. Let's make it possible for the player to jump now. To do this, we'll need to open up the client code. In the player controller class's send input to server method, we're going to add another bool to the array of inputs that we're sending over. That's already it for the client side of things, the rest of the logic will be server side. Back in the server's player class, we're going to add a second if statement inside the move method. This one will check if the jump key was pressed, in which case we'll simply set the vertical velocity to our jump speed. Additionally, in the player's initialize method, we need to increase the length of our inputs array by 1 to prevent errors. 
If you connect the client to the server now, you should be able to jump around. I'm going to add a few boxes just to make the world a little more interesting. You can place these in any way you like, or you can entirely skip this step. In order for the player to be able to see the game world, we simply need to place the same objects in the exact same spots as on the server. It doesn't matter if you've placed your objects differently than I did, as long as your servers and clients versions match perfectly. At this point, you should be able to jump around in the little world you've built. We're going to make one last adjustment to the Network Manager class. Right now we're spawning the player at the world's origin point, which happens to be right inside our ground plane, so I'm going to raise the spawn position by half a unit. Also, I'm currently not too happy with how floaty the player feels, so I'm actually going to double the gravity and increase the jump speed. This feels a lot better to me, but you can obviously play around with those values until you find something you like. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, make sure to smash that like button, and if you have any suggestions for what the next tutorial should be about, make sure to leave a comment down below. I read and respond to all the comments, so your ideas will not go unnoticed. If you've made it this far in the series, consider subscribing and go check out my devlogs where I'm working on a pirate themed multiplayer game. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.